Um, I'll call the meeting to order. Except for Beth. It's what? Beth Toppy is not here either. Yeah. Okay. No. 10.05. At 10.05, we call the meeting to order. Okay, let's look at our agenda. And the opening introduction is just hello, everybody. And um, when we get to the uh, director's report and discussions with down at the bottom, I, I will talk a little bit more about this meeting situation. And Nancy can enlighten us to, to a good deal of it. Um, the first thing we're going to do is accept the uh, minutes from the last meeting. Did everybody read them? Motion to accept. Second. 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 So moved. Okay. And now we would like to hear from Elaine, please. All righty. Good morning. Uh, so I sent out two reports, the June, the final June uh, 2021, uh, which really didn't change much at all from what mm -hmm. we reported last month. So we ended up with the um, excess of 37,283 as we had on the draft with a few minor changes in the revolving fund and gift donations, but everyone, everything pretty much ended up where we expected to be and it all looks good. Um, I kept the um, town going into July and August, the town accountant has uh, yet to close the books for the town. Typically that's done September, early October. When he does that, he will carry forward in our reports from the town, the carryover balances for the different funds, gifts, revolving fund and formula grant. Uh, they're not appearing there yet, but I'm tracking them and we'll make sure that we are in agreement and adjust as necessary. So during the first two months of the current fiscal year, 2022, um, if you just use the July, the August report, those two numbers that appear prior month and current month, you've got July and August right there. So in July in the uh, general fund, we spent 29,371. And in August, we spent 22,934. Pretty much on target of where we've been for the past year, a little bit higher with I think the increase in activity. Um, and in the formula grant moving over, we spent um, $2,562, uh, which is primarily for Nettie's payroll as it's been for the last couple of years. Moving over to revolving fund, um, we do see an increase in receipts and expenditures total of 33.90 in receipts and 77.40. And I think that's reflective of the increase in activity from what we had been doing last year, because I'm comparing with a year ago, July and August. Um, and it, in addition, you'll see that we have a 4,000 negative. Part of that we believe is the, um, well, it's the activity, but it's also showing food and we applied all of the food costs to the revolving fund so far this current fiscal year with the expectation that it will be reviewed. This is going to be a meeting in October, I believe Nancy said. And now uh, we'll review it then and determine the proper allocation between revolving fund and the line item in the general fund of um, meals, congregate meals expense. So we'll be doing that after we have a full quarters of expense make that allocation and you'll see an adjustment come through probably in October. At um, August 31st, we have a fund balance in the revolving fund of um, 18,829. Going over to gifts, we had, um, we had activity of 5,000 in the month of August receipts, which is the social worker receipts and 1,095 of um, donations in memory of Joe Fagan, which I thought that was so sweet. And uh, that money's being spent for a bench on the Bocce court. How much was that again? In his memory, 1,095 uh -huh. in July, right at the beginning of July, it was deposited. What a nice, nice memory for him. Mm -hmm. um, so as I mentioned, the fund balances in the report, I show what the um, 
unbalanced end of period is. But the report, as I say, on the town that I get, we're not sending it all to you. If anybody wants that report, you're more than we're more than happy to send it to you, but less paper, we figure. Yeah, can I get a couple? Uh, yeah, I know, please. <laughs> but so that's just not posted yet, but it will be. Any questions or comments? I have um, a question. So um, Don Piot wanted to start dumping more expenses into the uh, revolving fund. And uh, so is that what we started doing July and August? That's correct, and yes. That was an effort to reduce the revolving fund. So is, well, there a, is there a plan that once we reduce it to kind of level up what we're dumping in the revolving fund? Yes, it is, and I try to explain that. We will, okay. there is a meeting to be held in October, anticipated for October, after we have the first quarter of all expenses, all of those meal expenses charged to the revolving fund some of those will be reallocated back to the general fund on the congregate meals line item expense. A formula or uh, there'll be a, a, um, an approach of, to take um, going forward. Okay. On that so, yeah, so we're just gonna readjust the um, chart of accounts, I guess, um, once we get through that. Well, I don't know that we need to adjust the chart of accounts, we'll just be making a transfer out of revolving fund and charging it against our general fund. Okay, okay. And I can show that as a separate line item so it'll be clear how much we did, um, right. you know, what that adjustment will be. Okay. So Nancy, has there been any word from the State House on um, the formula grant this year? Not nothing. From what I heard, this was like a month or so back that it was it was going to be level funding, whatever we had gotten. Um, but that uh, when I had heard that, they weren't sure about the numbers with the new census. So it was kind of uh, uncertain whether or not they were going to take into account the new numbers or if they were just going to figure it out this year and do it for next year. So they have not given me any indication other than they think it's gonna be level funding. That's what I got from um, MCOA. Got so it. hopefully that's the case. That's what I'm working off of that idea. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you very much, Elaine. So. And um, Nancy, I'm going to call on you now because I know you have a lot. Okay. I'm going to share my screen so you guys can see um, what You're I'm saying here. Yeah. Helena, you're on mute. Oh, okay. there you go. Can we accept the treasurer's report? Yes, we can. Great. <laughs> so moved. Second. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, welcome back everybody from our month off. I hope everybody had a nice, enjoyable August. Uh, so um, all programs are pretty much back. Um, the one that we did not get hear back from or we heard back but she can't fill the spot is the foot care nurse um, and that was that's a petty care uh, so that was really popular and, and much needed um, for seniors and the fact that you know they can't it's difficult to get down to the um, around their feet and cut that toenails and all so we do have someone who's coming in to do the uh, manicures and pedicures and uh, she can do it to a certain point, point, but she's not a nurse. So we'd rather have a, an actual registered nurse um, take a look at the, um, at the feet, that kind of thing. So we're working on that uh, and hoping we're going to get something, um, somebody to replace that popular program. Uh, as you guys, if you've been here, you know masks are now required inside Wilcut Commons. And so we're trying to have as many programs as we can outside. Anything that has food is asked to go outside. So for instance, this morning is our first. If you can come down, I'd love to see everybody. Um, outside, we have cafe for the first time in over a year and a half. Um, we have the tent over the patio and it looks great. People are happy and um, it seems to be working out really well. So that's going to be for the next hopefully four, five, six weeks, uh, we can do as many programs outside. Uh, so in talking about 
earlier we had a, uh, started a conversation about having these board meetings virtual. Uh, and that is because the town says that it's a, if it's a public meeting, it's not private meeting. So if you have meetings here at the senior center or anywhere else in town hall, you can do that. But if it's a public meeting, like our board meetings, they do want it to be virtual so that anybody can join in and we can record it. Uh, so the Board of Selectmen and I think the school committee have been, have been using the chart room here at Wilcott Commons because there's what's called, I think it's the a poly X5500 or X50, it's, it's this really super duper um, device that can stream uh, and it's interactive. So you can see all the people on the big screen and it, it just makes a lot of sense to do it for those big meetings, but it has to be in the chart room. So that's how the town is really getting around uh, offering uh, virtual programs in person uh, because they have this, this poly X50 um, streaming service. If we looked at that, they said that we could use that, and I'm sure if we decided to do that, we could do it as well. But we'd have to do it in cat. We'd have to do it in the chart room, which from Monday mornings it really doesn't work uh, for this group. So our men's group has really been asking us to do something because they want to continue hybrid programming for their group because they have a lot of people who are unable to come to their meetings. They're getting 12, 13, 14 on a regular basis every month. It's a great group of, of guys and they wanna keep their group together. So um, I looked into uh, a uh, OWL. It's a smart video conferencing um, streaming device and it's about this big and it does the same thing pretty much. We put people, we could do 12, 12 of us in a U shape. We put the OWL in the middle and then it can kind of circulate around and it listens to who it's talking and then everybody who is at home if they're, if, if they're joining us, they can be on screen, but we can also be in person. So I think that's a really good option. Uh, I just have to run that by uh, Miriam. She had mentioned before that, that uh, if it worked and we could still record it, that we should be able to do it. Um, so it's a little bit pricey, it's over $1,100, uh, but I worked it out and um, spoke with Megan, who's the library director, and they can see it happening for their some of their programs and meetings. So uh, we split the cost and uh, we're, we just ordered it. So we're hoping that once that comes in, I'm gonna have the, um, the guinea pigs be our, our men's group. And once we know how that works, then hopefully we can do it for our group as well. Uh, and that's gonna be what I'm, I'm hoping is gonna be the answer for us. So we can still do things virtually, um, but we'll be in person. Um, any Yay questions on for that? you, Nancy. Thank you. That's yeah. a wonderful idea. Yeah. I know. Right. It's so important. And, and it looks like things are not going to change around here for a long time right. with masks and everything. So the more we can do, and yeah. that's why I thought, you know, this group it's so important for. Obviously, it was important for the men's group, but there's going to be so many other things that we are going to want to do hybrid. Um, yeah. And that's just the way the world is working now. More people are saying, oh, we could, you know, join a program but not have to leave the house. It just makes a lot of sense. So I'm hoping we get a lot of use out of it. Uh, we're having um, program, in case anybody was interested, uh, the Senior Learning Network. I know that adult education is really big and people wanna see that. Uh, and we wanna offer more programming like that. So it's a virtual presentation. We did one last week, it worked out pretty good. Um, we're still working out the, bu the, um, the bugs in it because we put it up on the screen and it's like a live presentation by someone and they're talking about all these really cool things like a national park or um, that Mystic Seaport is what we had the first week, um, but the Smithsonian, um, horseback librarians. So all these really interesting, um, hopefully educational uh, programming, but we could only watch the person doing it, but we couldn't interact. So again, either this OWL or this X50 uh, Polly X50, we can actually sit there, see her up there, and then we can ask questions and she can answer us. So it's going to be so much more interactive. I think it's going to open it up to us for so many more things um, going forward as more and more uh, programming is going in this direction. But I'm excited for this senior learning network. I hope it gets popular. Um, we're offering it for free for at least the next six weeks. And if it looks like people are interested in it and they come in, I want it to really be something that's um, 
you know, interactive and engaging and people, you know, want to sit down afterwards and, and continue talking about it. That's, that's my goal um, with that um, program. So we'll see where it goes after these six weeks, we'll turn it around and see if we want to grab another six weeks off of it, if it seems popular. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, I know over the years, we've always wanted Bocce to go here at the Senior Center and it is and it's gone. <laughs> so oh, good. Uh, yeah, good. thanks to, uh, you know, David Bigley and a couple of his uh, friends, especially the men's group. And they just uh, have done a great job of making people feel welcome. We've gotten new members every week, seeing somebody's like kind of coming in saying, are we having Bocce? So it is open all, all day, you know, people could go out there if they wanted to have private, you know, a foursome or however many do it with their friends, but we haven't gotten anybody doing that. Um, there was last uh, Tuesday, there was 12 people. So they had two teams of six, which right. just seems they have so much fun. They're always laughing. You know, they, it's, it's perfect weather. Luckily, knock on wood, every Tuesday from four to, four to uh, six, it's been really um, perfect. So it seems to be a good time for people, um, you know, during the day. Start? Excuse me? What time? Four. Okay, so it's like four to, four to six or? Four to six they play. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. So, um, yeah, so I'm really happy with that, but we'd love to have uh, it, it be something that people come during the day and just play because it's available to them, but it seems like they want to play as drop-in and that's fine too. Um, uh, we'll just have to make sure come the spring when we're back to having it again, people remember. I, I think they will. Um, um, Nancy, uh, can I interrupt just a little bit? I think oh, you can, because Diana is one of our fabulous members. So you can tell us firsthand how much you like it. Yeah, we're, we're having a wonderful time. I think there's a lot of pluses to this in that there are many different people that you didn't know before that have come out of the woodwork and <laughs> are enjoying each other. It's it's fun to see. And we are growing with every week. We're up now almost a solid 12 every single week. Um, we have two wonderful instructors, which a lot of towns don't have. And we're very blessed. They have Steve and Val. And Steve is a gentleman that sits very quietly. He's an excellent player. So we don't like him to play because he <laughs> always gets what he needs. But he's taught us how to score. He's taught us the ins, the outs. He's taught us what's allowed, what's not allowed. Um, and Val is a good player, a very good player. And she also has some of the pieces that Steve doesn't do. And it's, it's worked beautifully because we've gotten to be able to meet each other and laugh, as she said, laugh a lot. And, um, and, and I think learn. Nancy, to your point, I think um, tomorrow night I'll talk it up as far as, hey, can two or three come down? Let's go down in the afternoon and try. Because when we do have six on each team, it's hard for us to get past two games. In other words, we try to get in two games because our score is 12. So whoever reaches 12 becomes two. But so if you have six, it's obviously, it has to rotate a little differently. So. Um, but I did know a couple of the gals had asked and a couple of the guys had asked if it was available during the day. So I'll sort of push that um, tomorrow night um, and people can practice, you know, because there is a real knack to it. It's really funny, but there is. Uh, and how you do it, and you know, where your ball goes and that. But it's a yeah. great, um, what's the word? It's a great uplift to people because most people can succeed and, and it's, and people really get kind of funny, but Thank you for being so generous with us. We have water every week. We actually even have a little other lately. We have a little um, cooler that's coming in to so that we can enjoy ourselves and it's fun. So that's, anybody that's, that wants to come, come on along. Yep, absolutely. We love to hear you guys laughing out there. We love to to see more people and like uh, we mentioned that you know people that would not normally come in here have been coming. Right. So uh, it's just a it's a great. Um, group and I hope it will continue and even if it's that that's something you guys need more than you know four to six if it's because it's outdoors and it's not interrupting any other program that we have it, you know you could start at three if that's what people want to do I, I'm sure it gets a little bit tiring too though after two hours it's like okay ready to go but um, it is available and and it's just nice to see because it was such a um, an important part of of World Cup Commons when it was first put in and I know it was put in um, 
you know, and donated with so much love and, and, and anticipation that it would be used and then it wasn't. And now it's used to get, being used again. And it's just a great thing to see. And Town Hall doesn't have a problem with it, I guess. Yeah, that, that's what happened the last time. It was ridiculous. We, we've told Town Hall, we have told yeah. what our hours are. Okay, um, thank you, Nancy. I, I had, um, do you have any new business? She still had staff changes on her list. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I, thank you. I just wanted to mention that, uh, so John Devaney, if you see him around, um, many of you may have known him. He was a driver for us a couple of years ago, uh, and then he stopped working for us um, prior to the pandemic, and now he's back. So. Uh, Gerard is, uh, has retired, as you know, but um, John is great. He's flexible. He's willing to come in when we need him. It's just working out really wonderful. So uh, that's, uh, that's a great addition. Um, so Nettie Nettle, uh, as you know, um, because she moved out of state, uh, she can't be in a town employee. So we're still working on getting her to be an, uh, a consultant for the town. Um, it's proving to be more difficult than it was before because she has to set herself up as a business because she used to be an employee. And so we're still working out the kinks in that and I'm hoping she's still going to be able to do it. Uh, uh, but, you know, it depends on how much work she wants to put into, you know, setting herself as, up as a business and continuing to do the same work. Um, but I know that she wants to finish out getting us uh, onto the, um, uh, you know, accredited process and, um, and it's going to work out the way it should in the end, I think. It just might take a little bit of time to, to get to that point. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is, uh, so because uh, Stephanie Saunders is a licensed clinical social worker, she can um, have an intern go under her. So Bridgewater State University um, has interns that need to get class credit. So Samantha Joyce, you may see her around. I think she's going to be here like 15 or 18 hours a week. It's, some, it's a large amount. Uh, but she just started uh, last week. She'll be working here. I believe it's every day uh, except to, uh, Wednesdays or something. But she's here pretty much every day. So hopefully she's going to start the uh, memory cafe. She'll be doing some friendly visiting. She'll be just kind of learning and helping us out wherever we need her to be helped um, to help around here. So I think she's going to be a great asset to us and she doesn't mind jumping right in. What's memory cafe, Nance? So memory cafe is part of our initiative for the uh, dementia, uh, friendly. Uh, dementia friendly uh, cohasset where Caregivers and people who have memory loss can come in and they just have a, a safe place to um, talk. Uh, so caregivers can do uh, talk amongst themselves and work with the person afflicted. And it's just real good. They, they have art, like art teachers will come in and they'll do an art program. They'll talk about um, you know, things that happened 30, 40 years ago in the news. So it's just a really good way to, um, to share with your loved one um, which isn't, you know, only for good things, um, whether they read something, whether they're doing an art project, whether they do a, a musical program, all these things geared towards the person. Um, with Is the, this um, something that's memory. regularly scheduled? It, yeah, it, it's something that's becoming more and more popular. Um, not all senior centers do it. That's why I'd like to do it. But some like social conservatory um, has a memory cafe uh, and it would be on a monthly basis. Uh, and last but not least, numbers are going up for us. We have um, 278 individuals came in. Um, the ones who do come in here always um, seem to do more than one program. They seem to, once they know what we're all about, uh, enjoy a lot of programs. So um, that's a lot of uh, in and out for some of those um, people. We had 209 rides uh, for 43 individuals, which is also growing. Uh, and in my next monthly VISTA, I'm really pushing people, um, not pushing, but I want people to know about all of our, um, our transportation, which seems like people, when they weren't needing it because the doctor's mm -hmm. offices weren't meeting in person, I think they kind of got out of habit of using the senior center. So I'm hoping that people will start using us more and more for um, 
for rides to the supermarket or just their errands. So I'm sure we'll see that increase. And they have, have any question, questions for me. Question, Nancy. Um, my question is uh, along those lines. We um, we got a um, an award or, or some money uh, for transportation for, for the taxi, which is great. And I'm wondering how how re with COVID and the um, restrictions that it, I'm afraid it's going to bring, I hope I'm not right, um, that maybe we could use that red, quite a bit so that people don't have to be all together in a van, you know, or for their, and, and they won't stop going to their medical appointments. Right. Is, is that a legitimate use for that money or is it? Oh, absolutely. And we've been using that for oh, medical okay. rides. Uh, the problem, the only negative that we've seen with that one is there has been a couple of times that we have reached out and, and said we needed um, to use them for a ride. And the purpose of the grant really wasn't to help the senior centers. It was to help the taxi companies uh, to mm -hmm. get more people. And so it's working and he's very busy and he's a one man show. So we'll call him and he says, oh, I've got a ride to the airport or I'm taking somebody else on a medical. So um, a few times he's had to um, not been able to assist us, um, but it, they're a good backup. Uh, we're hoping now that we have regular drivers. We've got Fred um, who's Hunt Work who's taking people on medical, but uh, you know, backup, we have Fish is back up and running. Uh, so I think we're going to be able to get people to their medical rides between all the, the, um, the resources that we have. Oh, that's great. I, I just wanted to make sure that people don't stop doing what they're supposed to be doing for lack of, um, you know, because of being uh, squished together in a van and they're not being squished together, but no, but in the van, oh, everybody the has to wear masks the way it is. But yeah, we still wear the, the mask and crack a window. So um, we haven't heard from anybody saying that they wouldn't go drive in the van because there has been anybody else. It hasn't really been crowded enough that we have any concerns with that right now, That's um, great. but I'm hoping that we'll, that might be a good problem to have if yeah. we have so many people needing us, which mm -hmm. uh, which is the point of, of trying to get the word out more. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Um, I, I was wondering about the um, celebrity chef um, situation. I was thinking way back when, when that started that we were reimbursing the chefs. Is that not true? I mean, apparently we're not now. No, we are absolutely reimbursing uh, for their for their anything for that the they material. purchase. Yeah, yep. for what they buy. And, and that was to that point. Elaine was saying that there was been more money um, coming out of our um, and not going in. So what right. we've been doing is uh, spending all the money like um, launch. Um, mm -hmm. Right. Um, there's only I believe one or two chefs that do not charge us. They purchase the food and then they prepare it, and um, they do not charge us for it. Um, right. But anybody that we, uh, you know, certainly we appreciate anybody who, um, who does chefs for, you know, is becomes the chef for us. So we reimburse them, um, then it's being put, taken out of our revolving fund. And then after every quarter, we're going to have Don Piat look at it and decide how much of that was for, because before we were mixing, we were taking everything yeah. out of congregate and then putting everything in revolving. So now we just have to figure out at the end of a quarter, how much of this money was um, we, did we get from the um, $4 that people are paying and how much was it for the food? Um, so it's yeah, just- no, I, I certainly, balance. I think that's very important. And, and I, I think that maybe you need to um, emphasize that a little more in the newsletter, because as I read the newsletter, I didn't think people were getting reimbursed for their, you say okay. I'm looking, we're looking for volunteer chefs to prepare a meal once a month. And it never says we will reimburse you for what you spend. Oh, okay, absolutely. I, would think I that might stop some people from doing it. Oh, I, I will absolutely <laughs> review that because I know that was a conversation that had come up when we wanted to the town manager to put it in his um, his weekly address address, mm -hmm. and we made sure we mentioned that. Um, yeah. So it might not be everywhere that we put that out there, but that's a really good point. Um, Tappy, thank you. I'll make yeah. sure that any publicity we have that says that they will get reimbursed. I don't want anybody to feel like that they're, you know, 
the, the yeah. town has money to reimburse. Right. So then my other um, thing I wanted to bring up was, and I'm, it's not so much personal, but Jim and I both do yoga with Amy on Tuesdays. And um, so three people in the class asked me to speak to the board about the issue of wearing masks um, in the building. They've dropped out of yoga totally because of it, um, because they're just not comfortable doing it in the mask. And um, I said I would bring it up. I, I understand what the rules are, but I personally wish we could go back to a hybrid yoga, um, Zoom and classroom. Yeah, That's and I, I, the attendance has not dropped dramatically since then. Right, and, and I think um, the important part of, of doing that is the instructor has to be on board because it's really the onus is on the instructor to actually hold a class in front of the, the camera and to the, to the classroom. So it's a lot... Yeah more difficult for the instructor to do that and i know that we've talked with amy and she's willing to because she is she's wonderful and she doesn't want to disappoint people so we're happy to set that back up again um it's just we wanted to see how it how it was going who know who knew when we started this two weeks ago whether or not this is going to last two weeks six weeks eight weeks or you know if it's going to last through the winter we'll, we'll have to do that because i know that um you know people don't like to exercise in masks but could the meeting owl work for that? Um, that's I, the thing is the way the meeting owl works. It has to be a certain uh, configuration, and the owl has to be in the middle. So it might be something that works. Um, it, okay. it, it certainly is a good um, thought to throw it out there and see if it's the way that you we know, configure things. Yeah, Jane Fonda used to be in the middle, and all the people were behind her. So you know, maybe we can try something like that with meeting owl. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be, again, we'll probably do a lot of trial and error and see what works, but um, we do want to, we, we don't want to, you know, have people who just got used to coming back to the center or doing their exercise not come because of, of the COVID precautions that we have in place, but um, we, you can't please everyone, um, and all we can do is, is do the best we can and, and follow the guidelines of our of the town public health department so yeah. um we will we'll look into certainly doing that as long as the instructors are um, in agreement uh, one more question i have um we're not serving our lunches regularly anymore we're doing it on wednesdays is that correct i no. in september we started tuesday wednesdays and thursdays oh, after labor did. day yeah, but that's outside right that's correct and that rule comes from the public health department in Cohasset. Yeah, in Cohasset, because Situate uh, is holding theirs indoors still. I mean, they don't know how long, but they are. So I, I just was curious. You know what? I think that's something that if that's the case, it's something that Pam should know about. Yeah. Because if she knows it and she talks to Situate and they look at whatever the guidelines are, it might be that one or the other can um, straighten that out. So I think that's a very good one, but I think it should go to Pam. I will give her a call. I was planning to give her a call to yep. find out whether it came from the States to her or how, how right. it was happening. Yeah, good. Yeah, I would, I would love to see them reaccommodate people indoors because this good weather isn't gonna last forever. And right now we have some great momentum. I had 16 people for lunch the other day and I wouldn't want to see that yeah. backslide just because, you know, some rules. Right. It, it, it's, it's scary to think that we're just getting momentum. Like you said, Jim, it's great to see so many people for those Wednesdays, we were packing it in, you know, between, you know, 16 and 18, 14, 16, 18 people, which is terrific. Um, and now when the bad weather comes, like last week, we had to cancel because it was raining on Thursday. Yeah. Um, and we don't want to see that happen. Uh, what just as people start getting used to coming here and, and the food is so good. And now that people are starting to see that, um, they look forward to it. Um, we've got so new how, people um, again. So lunch. the question I would, I would have for Pam is how is she handling the lunching at the school? Okay. How, how would our lunch be different than how they're serving lunch at school? That's a good question. Um, and good I'm, one, I'm, Paul. I'm going to be honest, <laughs> Town of Falmouth is doing I mean, the same thing. Yeah, I mean, we have, open. yeah, so, I mean, we have space in our facility if they wanted us to sit six feet apart, but certainly, you know, we've got three schools that are feeding children now every day um, on a routine basis. So if they're able to do it successfully, 
we should be able to apply that same accommodation for the senior center. Mm -hmm. I, I okay. agree with you, Paul, and that's yeah. why I, I brought it up. And I will call Pam and take it from there. Thank you. And if if, if they talk about age, um, I, you know, our argument there would be that I, I would suspect that everyone coming to lunch is more than likely vaccinated. Everybody. Um, is. Where there's a percentage of, of school kids that probably aren't. It's a, because of the age, um, and B, because of choice. So we would probably have a higher percentage of vaccinated people. Um, so that would mitigate the risk if she if she had any issues with that. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. And, of course, the news today was that Massachusetts, Vermont, and Connecticut are the highest states in the country to have two-thirds of their population vaccinated. Right. And we have the lowest rate of COVID cases per capita. Okay. So if we present that information to her, I can't see why we couldn't have these lunches indoors. Yeah. Yeah. Do I, I have... don't see the logic, logic either, um, but I, I'm willing to listen. So if he, when people come into the um, senior center, they had to wear, they had to wear masks again, correct? Correct. They come in. Right. All, yeah, all, okay. all, all public buildings. So if that's the case, and then they're coming in for lunch, the CDC allows anybody that is sitting down for lunch to take their mask off to eat. Um, mm -hmm. So why couldn't we do it inside and follow the same lines that a restaurant runs or anybody else runs? Right. Yeah, it must I, be so hard to keep the celebrity chefs in place because you prepare this move, a meal and then it gets canceled. That's pretty yeah. frustrating. Oh. Absolutely. Yeah. And we don't want to have to do that. And, but I think we, as to Pim and Mary's point um, in the, uh, the public health department, it is due to the age and the vulnerability of the seniors. But Paul makes a, a great point. You know, there's probably, we'll get 100% of our guests here are going to be vaccinated versus the kids in the school. Um, and we do have the space if we need to do it, you know, put the tables even six feet apart and put four, per, four people at each table. So, yeah. We can accommodate that if they're willing to, you know, give give this to us at least through the winter, um, so that we don't have to stop the, the meals altogether. Nancy, let me ask you a question. Um, uh, people are required to wear a mask, but do we know when people come in whether they are vaccinated or not? Right now, it doesn't matter. Before, we used to say if you're unvaccinated, uh, if you're not vaccinated, we uh, do require you wear a mask. If you're vaccinated, you're not required. Um, so we said that to them and they all would say, oh, I'm already vaccinated. I'm vaccinated. I don't think one person said they're not. Um, but now we don't even ask. We just say it doesn't matter your vaccination status. Everyone wears a mask. Any other questions? The only thing we might want to consider is um, we have a lot of money in our gift uh, account if we wanted to buy some um, of the outdoor patio heaters. Um, a lot of restaurants use them for outdoor to extend outdoor dining, you know, um, I don't know if they're a thousand a piece or whatever they are, but they run on propane. So it might be something we consider if we get pushback. Yeah, and um, I did actually start looking into that and um, was referred to because of the propane. Uh, so I had to reach out to the fire department who referred us to a couple of different things. So it's like, oh my gosh. So now we have so many different um, steps to this. So I'd rather have everybody indoors. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, that is but, if, yeah. but if we can't, um, we will look into that and take that next step. And especially if it's going to be an expense like that we, and we have to do the gift account, um, the good thing is we have the money to do that. Okay, so so some some issues that we can, we can address to get around some of that, not, not get around it, but kind of... Uh, uh, accommodate what we want to do. You know, we could we could rent um, and put up a, a regular professional tent out on the patio side. Um, you know, uh, like they do in the summertime for the art festival. You know, it doesn't have to be a giant square one. I'm sure they've got round ones or something appropriately sized um, that you could put the vinyl windows on the sides. Yeah, we do have the sides for this tent, um, and that was on, he's on, that's on my list to ask Glenn. When we first put it up on the side yard, he had the, the, um, the sides 
on it and we okay. felt we didn't need it. But now if we're going to be doing it through the, the late fall, we will ask him to put it back up again, those sides. Yeah. So those are, you know, some of the things we can do. Anything else, people? Um, I, I just had one thing. I um, I have spoken individually with um, three of our selectmen regarding, and I've talked to Nancy a couple times about this. I got really nervous when um, we were told that the, um, oh, wait, where am I? Let me pull this together. Um, Nancy, what, what we've been to, oh, the meeting where we discussed the possibility of using the senior center property for the transition. And um, the first thing I heard was, oh, I, I think they've sort of gone beyond that. They, they, they're looking at to rent a whole spot, space, et cetera, et cetera. And they seemed, very, well, two of them seemed very uh, accommodating. And the new one was very interested to know about um, the senior center and what our concerns were about not having that kind of activity in and out of the um, senior center. So I told Nancy, I don't want to bring marshmallows until there's a fire. And so I'm, I'm going to hold because I do think they've moved on from there. Although I, what I did was I went back and watched the, uh, the meeting of the committee, the building committee that discussed that very issue and the feedback, et cetera. And they didn't quite let it go. And I, I'm, I get kind of nervous about those things. So I'm gonna keep my ears open again. And so if it comes up again, I'll be right on it. But um, I, I just think I, let them know that it just wasn't as easy as they seemed to think, as the presentation seemed to think it was. And um, Miriam saying, um, and she's very nice, she's very accommodating, is saying that, well, you know, we all have to cooperate in this hardship. And I, my, my feeling is, it's not everybody, it, it, it's us. But the other feeling was we're going to have, if it goes through, and we're not even sure that that's happening, if and when it goes through, we don't, the idea of having to hold back to put up or to accommodate somewhere, hopefully not at the senior center, um, lavatory and a lunchroom in this whole setup is silly. I mean, it's so much money that's going into it. They should set us, I, it's my feeling, they should set aside enough money to accommodate everybody. And um, th that needs to be accommodated. So that's sort of where I'm coming from. Ken, if you could email us, if you know, I, I don't look at different departments' uh, agendas uh, when they have their meetings, but if, if some of this is coming up on an agenda, I'd love to attend a Zoom meeting to say, I think if we just pop up on the screen, even if we yeah. say nothing, they know we're there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, this this one took place. Um, yeah, there with your pitchfork. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. It, it has to be posted. I just look at the meetings that are posted. Okay. And I had missed it, but you can go back, and then they can send you the link, and you can go on in and watch it. Right again, which is what I did. That wasn't easy to do. You have to call people at town hall and they have to send it to you and all that kind of stuff. But I, I, I thought like they were a couple of years away from this mess. I think so. And yeah. so anything they say is going to be pre premature. Although um, yeah. I got, my ears went up when, when I started talking when they were there the last time. Yeah, so. if, we, if, we, if we can't have 16 people indoors for lunch, how are we going to have 30 <laughs> town hall employees? You know, so. And it was little things like, first of all, the, the use of, of the bathrooms to me is, is it, there are only three stalls downstairs. And some of our people go to, the, 
with assistance, et cetera, like that. You, you can't just have people going in and out. And the idea, and maybe they'll use the lunchroom. No, <laughs> mostly because you just don't go in and use the lunchroom. If when we're under quarantine and, and stuff like that, who's going to clean it? Who's going to, uh, you know, who's going to do the tables? Who's going to, who's going to use the equipment? Uh, I remember we, we, we ha at our church, we've been generous about leaving our, um, the kitchen open, it said, well, for people to use it during meetings and things were disappearing, our supplies, I mean, oh, they come in, oh, there's coffee here, we'll use it right here, we'll use this, we'll use, and um, that, that kind of thing. I, I think they just think, well, if it's there, we could use it. So, um, I think they ought to be more aware of the concerns that we have. I think and your I will do that, but again, I'm not going to the fire and let, I'm not bringing marshmallows into to the fire, so uh, that's, that's my comment. Anybody else, any concerns about this coming winter? I'm hoping to get back there for some more things. Are we going to be having the artist lectures come back? Well, the uh, the program that we had before with the particular artist, she no longer does it, and all she wants to do is do it virtually, which Oof. does not work. It does not translate, I don't think, as well. So, if we can find another program like that, we will have it back. But that particular one did not last through the pandemic. Okay. Sadly enough, because it was very popular. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, how, how are you handling Bob Jackman's class tomorrow? Is that indoors? That's indoors because they can be upstairs and wearing masks. So okay. we're still planning on having that until, I mean, for right now, we're thinking anything indoors, as long as it does not require eating, we're good to go. And, and that's what we've been doing. So okay. um, well, good. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming, everybody. Um, and We'll see you next week, next month. You get a a missile from um, Richard, and hopefully one of these will either be there with the, with an owl looking at us. That sounds weird, but does it really turn his head to look at who's speaking? Yeah, it's, I, I okay. believe it does. It's got two big eyes. That's I think. Is that a possibility? Looking. It could be in use by next month, Nance. I'm hoping if we if we have. If we got the IT has to order it, so we just put in the money for it now. Yeah. Uh, I want it to run it by the men's group first. If we do right. that within the next couple of Thursdays, I'm hopeful if it works with them, we'll try it for us next month. Great, that's right. my goal. But we'll keep you guys posted. And did right. IT said that they would order it right away, or yeah, oh, that's, great. yes, that's what they said. Perfect. Anything else, Diana? Do you have anything else? No, I'm okay. I, 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 I know your concerns, but I will also tell you that um, the um, swim center is not going to put up with any parking of any type for. Well, I, you know, I, I, I knew I could count on that. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> no way, no way, no. Um, we do have, um, I'm actually retiring, but the group that's there, um, we are um, going to be using the back end of the parking lot quite a bit uh, because we are having all new equipment put in over the winter time while we have the time. So um, probably we will have some trucks in and out down there for a new filter system going in. And uh, we're collaborating right now with a solar system that will up the temperature of the water by about five to eight degrees. Oh. Um, and it will, it will also help us economically because we can save the electricity during the winter time that's stored and uh, help us with our um, electric bill in the summertime. And, um, and we have a lot going on up there. So it will be busy over the year. But to you, uh, I will tell all of you, I stand up and fight till the last minute. They're not <laughs> gonna use that parking lot for anything. <laughs> so, after the bus routine this year, I said, that's it, nothing. Well, they're gone. They're gone now. Yeah, you know where they are. No. They're down on 3A. Oh. They're down past Opus on Hardware. 
Oh, for her. Oh, oh, okay. I've seen yeah, Donald Stasco let them have the, <laughs> the uh, space down there. That, that's why I recommended they put the town hall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, an, it's an empty building, so. Yeah, it's a big empty building. Nothing right. tells welcome to Cohasset like that spot. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, they, but the thing is, they have those the people who uh, they're not going to hold it forever. I mean, they're going to want to get rid of it. So the town has to decide whether it wants to rent it or not. But anyway, that's not my problem. So right. Yeah. Okay. Well, everybody, have a good month. Move to adjourn. Yeah. And um, hope to see you at the senior center. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, bye. Thank bye you. everyone. Bye. Everybody. bye.